On a recent trip to Stewart Island, we encountered a large number of rats. The Department of Conservation had used 1080 poison in bait bags in the localised area, and as a consequence, an increase in the rat population resulted. The rats were active during daylight and offered an excellent opportunity for us to undertake some citizen science. We were quickly greeted by the resident political rodent community, their apologists and supporters. First up is the conservation manager. Then we have the science spokesperson. Followed by the rat every cat loves to hate. And with every bureaucracy, there's a master of spin. The expert of collated anecdote. And finally the rat that says whatever her employers tell her to, to be part of the team. Get an egg. Put just a smallish egg. After settling in in a day of observation, it was agreed that it was time to put the appetite of these rodents to the test. Two bits of bread, one with peanut butter, and one with just bread. Chook egg, free range, straight out of the chook nest. Should be quite enough. Spare fish in your back pocket it comes in handy at times like this. Fish as well that I caught yesterday. To see which rat prefers or what they eat. It was now simply a matter of patience, and it wasn't long before Dave Ratty Hands was on the scene and poking around. He was certainly keen on the bread with peanut butter coated onto it. No interest in the free range chook egg, no interest in the fish. No interest in the bread without spread. No, Dave was all nuts. Without warning, Graham Alley Rat decided to ascend the front porch stump to get a bird's eye view and a better perspective of the banquet. He could smell the fish and the bread, but upon closer inspection, noticed Dave and was immediately repelled. Dave, as sneaky as ever, wasn't in the mood for sharing, and so it was off with the Mollenberg and peanut butter. A short time later, I turned back to the action to notice Gareth Pussy Rat had snuck into the fish. It was no surprise, given the sooner the fish was gone, the less chance a cat could find it. But to my surprise, something else got his attention. Gareth was keen on peanut butter too. Not eggs, but plain bread will do. Gareth was obviously hungry, and after some time I made the decision to switch the plain bread with peanut buttered bread and crack open the egg. Rats don't live long in the wild. The average lifespan is less than a year. In one study, the researcher found that 95% of the rats living in a farm were no longer alive after a year, so rats suffer very high mortality in the wild. However, their birth rate is high as well, ranging from 1% to 6% of the carrying capacity per month during population recovery following events like pest control operations. Within minutes, Graham Alley Rat showed up again. A quick scan to see who was about, a sniff of the fish, a splash into the egg yolk, and he was off with the bread before Dave had a clue what was going on. No interest in the egg or yolk whatsoever. What I'm going to do is put another piece of bread without peanut butter on it to see how he likes that. Excuse me for a moment. Oh, I might just zoom in a little. And so it was back to basics. Plain bread, fish and egg. Before long, Jan Wrongrat appeared. She wandered around for a while and appeared to be a little lost. Another rat, difficult to identify, pointed her back in the right direction. After a roundabout and protracted circumference of the banquet, she was back on track. And once she gets her teeth into something, there's no letting go. Jan, like her peers, prefers plain old bread. Gee, sneaky 
a little sod. Get some bread. Just have a look. A quick scan around my environment. I approached the fish and the egg to investigate. As you can see, there's the egg. Not the slightest bit interested in the egg. Fish is fresh. You eat the fish, but they seem to prefer the bread with or without peanut butter. So then just up there. So it was time to boil a billy, and like any good spin doctor, the time to strike is when the audience is relaxed. So Dave, known for his excellent anecdotal work, shows that he's willing to walk the wire, even if he risks spinning out of control. With less food on offer now, and only crumbs of the bread left, Dave chooses to try the fish. After all, terakihi is considered a top shelf dish. However, one thing that is proving hard to do out here is to get any of the rat community even slightly interested in an egg. Bread, nuts, fish, peanut butter appear to be far more attractive to the rats of Rakiura than an egg. So it's time to change tactics and use a little more encouragement. So we'll put some peanut butter on these eggs. See if we'll eat the egg. Lures are sometimes used by the proponents of 1080 poison to help capture predation footage. The sort of footage you see on the news every week. The Department of Conservation has been carrying out animal control on parts of Stewart Island, targeting rats, possums, cats and deer. The department has been distributing 1080 poison bait contained in bait bags across several blocks of the island. This targeted animal control can cause disruption to the ecosystem and as a result, rat populations can increase, as is the case in the block we are visiting. This phenomenon does not seem to appear where 1080 poison is not used like in the Waikari Moana area in the Uruera National Park, where the ecosystem remains in a healthy and balanced state. Eugenie Savage Rat is no stranger to city life, but out here, in the wild, it takes a while to get to know your way around and how the ecosystem actually works. Pretty easy to convince the public that rodent populations are devastating bird's eggs, but in the real world, eggs appear pretty boring to rats. And then, like a flash in the pan, Nicola Rotoki appears. For a moment, she starts to give a speech, but then realises it's her boss Eugenie, and scampers off, careful not to offend the hand that feeds her. Rats have excellent senses to identify potential food sources. They rely on their whiskers through touch, and their nose and hearing are also fine-tuned. The eyesight appears to be designed for close encounters, and their vision is reportedly quite blurry. Eugenie shows little interest in peanut butter or the egg. Grass and shoots are her preference. And then, while doing his beat, Gareth spots Eugenie and goes for her like Trump on a Mexican. Put some couple of nuts around the egg. Rats are part of the diet of many animals and native birds, and have many predators in New Zealand forests. Cats, stoats and ferrets, moor pork, hawks, falcon, weka, pukeko and kia all find a rat a very attractive meal. However, when the predator numbers are reduced in pest control operations, the rats, because of their ability to breed rapidly,
can soon recover and overpopulate the forests. The peanuts are distributed around the peanut butter coated egg in an attempt to tune the rat's palate and encourage the rats to investigate the egg. And once again, it wasn't long before Graham Alley Rat showed up. A quick lick, a fast kick, and Graham was off to the sticks. Something had bothered him. There was an intruder. Rats are no match for an aggressive Tui, so it's no surprise Graham scurried off. The Tui forages for any small food items or insects left exposed and can sometimes encounter small crumbs of cereal bait when aerial 1080 poisoning operations are undertaken. Soon after the Tui is gone, Dave Rattyhands is back on the scene. The nuts sure get his interest. Mind you, Dave is just nuts. Once the nut is consumed, it's back to the egg to clean up any last remnants of the peanut butter. Meanwhile, Gareth Pussy Rat is slowly approaching the feeding area. Dave tries to puff up his chest like a squirrel, but Gareth ignores him and immediately locates a hidden nut. Dave can only watch as Gareth munches with delight. The jump trick disperses both rats, but it's too late. Gareth's cat-like instincts beat Dave this time. cracked open another egg and placed bread around it to reinvestigate what we had already witnessed. Oh look at that. It's just got that not even interested in the yolk at all. Straight to the bread again. And it's basically standing in the yolk isn't it you know? Yes. So you should dip it in the egg yolk. Yeah that's right. But no he's not interested in that either. Quite cute the way he's sitting there isn't it? For a total of eight days, we stayed at the excellent hut made by the Rakiura Hunter Camp Trust. No one had stayed in the hut for weeks prior to our visit, and for the entire time we were there, a complete egg was left in the open for any cat, rat or possum to consume. The egg remained intact the entire time. It's interesting to note that rats aren't considered a threat to bird populations in other countries of the world. In New Zealand, the pest industry relies on keeping the public in a state of predation fear to sustain its $100 million aerial poison budgets. We thank all the rats that participated in this experiment, and be sure to catch the next episode where we ask a possum what it really thinks about the use of 1080 poison for wildlife management, and whether it effectively controls rats. If it wasn't so serious, it would be a laughing matter.